It's DDK and I'm back with Vid Talk episode four. Y'all got some questions and you want to know the answers, baby. I'm here to answer them. But before we get into Van Talk, I need you guys to smash that like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button. I'm giving you guys a lot of free game. All I'm asking is you smash the subscribe button and also smash that like button. And let's try to get this video to 1,000 likes. We are trying to get right. Let's go. Okay, so question number one comes from at Jeff Little, and he says, um, first he says that he can't speak for everyone else, but he appreciates everything that you've given out on this channel for free. Um, and then he says, his question is, besides needing his authority, BOC3, and UCR, and commercial insurance, is there any other documentation that he needs to run his van? I'm going to tell you the honest truth. I don't know nothing about what you're talking about. I don't know about, I don't know nothing about MCs and DOTs and BOC3s and 123456789 and 10s. All I know is I try to go out there and get in. Honestly, that's over the road stuff, and I do not do over the road, so I don't have my own authority, so I'm not going to send you off and tell you need to get this, 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 because I honestly, to be honest with you, I have no clue at all. I don't even really know what a BOC3 is. I looked it up, but it's, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just, look, I'm just going to tell you the truth. I do not know. I do not have an MC. I do not have a DOT. I do not have a BOC3 and whatever else. I don't have any of that. I use a carrier company, so I don't have to deal with all that. So, honestly, I'm sorry I couldn't answer your question, but I, from what I think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, remember, I'm thinking, I think that you may be okay with those things. Uh, I'm not for sure, though, so I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I just don't know. Okay, question number two comes from at third element, and he says, going back to the question he asked last week, um, can he put his van in the business if it's not a logistics business and still use it for logistics? Absolutely, you can absolutely do that. Guess why? Because we did it. So we put the van in our one LLC, and then we added the logistics company after we already put the van in the LLC. So all of it is under like the same umbrella. So you you should be good with that. You shouldn't have any issues. Hey, go out there and just get busy. I, a lot of this stuff is technical and me personally i'm sorry i'm just not very a very technical person i just go with the flow my business partner she helps me with a lot of this stuff guys i do not know nothing about that paperwork and all that uh stuff like that she's a, more of an expert than me i just know how to go ahead and get busy that's really all i know how to do but you definitely can use it for logistics even if the company does not say logistics on it it's it's pretty sweet you already got the llc put the van under there and go out there and get that money gotta get this money understand me understand me um he also says do you know if it's possible um do you know how it's possible to get dedicated routes without cargo insurance um that's very seldom that's going to happen you can go to t-force logistics and you can go under their insurance you don't have to go uh get your own insurance you just go under there they're gonna take a, like some money out every week two weeks or a month i'm not sure exactly when but they're gonna take the money out your your payments and then you just do it that way as far as just going under there like without any insurance, I don't think any logistics company is really gonna do that. I'm just being honest with you. We barely low-key supposed to be doing this with uh, doing Uber Eats and DoorDash and all that stuff. They low-key want us to have commercial insurance with that. So I know if you're uh, picking up some items that cost more than that, that they're definitely gonna want you to have some type of insurance or they probably won't let you on board, unfortunately. Believe you me, I really want you to go out there and get busy too. I really wish you didn't have to, but you do. Hey, it's their rules, not mine. And then last, he says, um, in your opinion, what's the best way to average 250 a day after gas using gig apps? You want me to tell you honest truth? I don't really know because it depends on where your market is, where you are at, uh, what's popping in your market. Because some people out there going crazy, like my guy, uh, Smith Brothers Transportation. He and I think he in New York or New Jersey, he's somewhere out east. He going crazy out there. He making seven, eight hundred. He going crazy using dispatch and different apps. It really depends on where you are at. Um, if you want kind of almost like some guaranteed money, you could go with like a uh, GoMo. You go with GoMo. I think we made like two fifty with GoMo. Um, you're gonna be delivering the small packages. Oh, you can do that. Do you go ahead and do that? You can pretty much. That's kind of like a dedicated route. They have routes every single day, Monday through Sunday. You can go there, let them know you want to be on board, talk to them and everything, and you can get busy like that. Because they do have routes every single day. You pick up at 5 in the morning, you run it that way. And I think that we was getting like 250, and you can pick your area that you want to go to. So you can go with GoMo, and then you can go with Amazon Flex, 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 Amazon Flex. You can get busy on Amazon Flex, but you ain't going to get like 250 every single time you do a route. But you can just do like two or three routes and go crazy like that. That's what I recommend. What you think? 
Um, yeah, packages. Ship driver, maybe. Oh, yeah, headphones. ship driver. I forgot about ship driver. You can download ship driver. Look, I got videos on all this. GoMo, Amazon Flex, and ship driver. I have three of those, three different videos on all of them and how much I made and how long it took and everything. All the info is in the video. So all you got to do is type in Cars and Cribs on YouTube and then type in uh, whatever video you want to see and it's, it should pop up. Question number three comes from at Darius Northern. He says, what's your approach to doing your taxes? Additionally, what tracker app do you use for mileage? Um, what's my post from doing the taxes? So honestly, we have two separate things. Like I have some of the gig apps in my personal name under my uh, social security number. So we're going to get 1099s for that. And then you, we also have like the carrier company and other apps on the business side. So we're going to separate the, each of them. I want to file my personal taxes and then the business is going to file its own taxes separately. And for, I just want to give you guys kind of a tip. I don't know if you guys write off like gas or anything, but me personally, what we do is we use the mileage. The mileage you're gonna win every time with the mileage. With the mileage, you probably low key ain't really gonna be paying that much taxes. But me personally, I do try to pay more taxes because um, if you want to like buy property or anything, you're gonna have to on paper make money. So if you if you can tax returns back from them and it's saying that you are making nothing in the business then you're not going to be able to buy any property or anything so that's the reason why i always make sure i pay taxes because i need to for uncle sam to give me some of them bands now as far as the tracker app like as far as mileage goes honestly we do not use any app and the reason we don't use any app is because we bought the van on december 31st so from the first on down it's going to be all in one swoop so next year what we're going to do is you write the mileage down at the end of the year and then you start over again and do it that way. That's the easiest way for us to do it. I don't know how you guys do it. Comment below and let me know how do you do your taxes. Question number four also comes from at Darius Northern and he says, just this is a fun question. Do you watch battle rap? And if you do, what's who's your favorite? Honestly, I never really was into battle rapping like that. I don't. I never really watched. I seen the maybe some couple of shorts and stuff on YouTube and all that. But honestly, I never really watched it. Uh, the only battle rapper I've heard was is his name Sirius Jones. I just know him because I heard the names before Sirius Jones. And now I know that Math Hoffa was a, a rapper just because he got the podcast. But other than that, I don't really know. It's Cassidy. I think Cassidy just said Cassidy just started battle rapping. So I don't really know about battle rapping like that. That ain't really my thing. But huge shout out to all the battle rappers. You know, I be having. You know, I got my little couple bars and all that. You know, I, you know, you know, you know. Um, he also says, are you dropping any new bars in 2024? Uh, I, I low-key thought about doing a mixtape. I ain't gonna lie. I thought about doing a mixtape. I thought about doing some songs, but I don't know if I'm really gonna do it. I think that I may try to get some of the artists. All the artists that, that uh, was usually on the channel before, the songs I was playing before, if you go back way when, the reason why I stopped playing them is because they had a lot of cussing in there and YouTube was kind of not really you know, monetizing my stuff as much as I wanted it to be. So that's why I kind of took those songs off and just go with the beats now. But I do want to make some couple tracks with some of the artists that's on this uh, had songs on the channel like Taliban Grimey, Mojo Two Times, R.N.D. Bishop, like a couple of people that uh, uh, Nick G, all of them. I definitely would do a track with all of them. You know, I try to get my bars up. You know, it's different when you. I did have a couple songs. I don't know if y'all know this, baby, but I did have like I had about when I went to when I was in Job Corps. I had about like eight songs. We had we had a little mix a baby a maybe miniature mixtape. We had you know we was doing our. <laughs> yeah i do hey shout out to my guy myron my guy myron gibbs if he watching he be watching the channel shout out to him he is uh, i think he is somewhere in illinois but he definitely know about the, the tracks we had we was going crazy question number five comes from at smoke and they say a while back you did a thing for curry to get people on the platform if they showed up to this meeting um, do you have anything like that coming around for people who missed out for that app or any other apps? Because the wait lists are extremely long. I wish I did. Honestly, Curry reached out to me about that. And they said they come to Chicago, get the people. I got the people. We, and they went. That's why I'm trying to tell you guys. You have to seize the opportunities when they're when they're there. I don't know if it's ever going to happen again. I don't know if any other app is ever going to reach out to me. I do have apps reach out to me here and there I've, in the past previously. But other than that, they really haven't been reaching out as of lately. Um, if they do, I definitely will be posting it on the channel so you can go out there, so you can come out here or go out there if, uh, if you are out here and they can sign you up because they were signing people up right on the spot. If you was on the wait list, they would put you right off the wait list. You could get the orders right then. So that's the benefits of, you know, sometimes you got to network. I know all of us don't want to all the time. I know you don't want to 
go to this thing you don't feel like going i don't be feeling like going but sometimes you just have to do what you have to do and honestly the turnout was pretty good so huge shout out to everyone that came out to the curry event baby Question number six comes from at Danny Boy, and he says, who is the carrier company that you did the three-month review on about nine days ago? I ain't telling you that. See, certain stuff, certain stuff I just cannot tell you because I'm under confidentiality contract. I can't be, you know, telling all my sources. I do have three new uh, people that I'm trying to get on with right now. I'm, all I'm going to say is this. Go to Indeed. Go. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to give you some game right now. Go to Indeed. Type in independent uh, independent contractor or type in cargo van owner operator. Just go in there, type in your area, and type in that. You will find a lot. There's plenty of carry coverage that you can choose from. Go in there, type in independent contractor or, or cargo van owner or something like that. Multiple different things and search to there. You're going to find some carriers. All you're going to have to do is have the insurance. They're going to want you to fill out all these 3,000 for Julian a million paperwork uh all this paperwork and then they will let you go out there and get them bands i hope you guys understand question number seven comes from at bob church and he says have you ever thought about adding another van with a driver huge shout out to my guys that henry bob bob church henry. mchenry bob mchenry bob my god mchenry bob honestly before i did think about yes we need to get another van and all that stuff but i want to say this Sometimes we try to move too fast and I was trying to move too fast and I wasn't gonna get no cash I was gonna be I was gonna put myself in a bind You wanna know why I was gonna put myself in a bind was because I don't even have consistent work with this van So it doesn't make sense to me to get another van and now I got two vans now I got to figure out work for this van and that van. So that's really why I did not move on that yet um, Also, if we did get another van, I will only allow my business partner to use the van I do not want to deal with no employees. I do not want to deal with it I do not want to deal with it I do not want to deal with nobody answering the phone or they overslept and they're supposed to go over and do this thing go and you know We have thought about doing a lot of different things But you have to allow other people and I do not like when I know other people because they're gonna let you down every time They mean they might do good in the first beginning or they might do bad in the first beginning But eventually they don't start not coming and all that stuff and I don't really got time for all that and what happens if a route is supposed to go out and the person who's supposed to do it is not there? Now I gotta go do it. But what if I gotta route myself? So now it's just too much, too much, to, uh, too much confusion going on. So my business partner can maybe get in the van. Uh, maybe my mom. Maybe some people that I know very, very close, and I know for sure that they're gonna go do what they need to do. But other than that, to the public, uh, I don't know if I see it happening. I'm just gonna be honest. I already don't want no employees. I know you know the all the, being a boss and all that stuff is different nowadays. People don't really want to work like that. So. That's what I got to say about that. Question number eight comes from at Susan Jenkins, and she says, is it necessary to go ahead and get your DOT, MC, and LLC in place before you research your market? No. Do not do that. Do not do that. Research, research, research first. You need to research the stuff first to even know if it's going to be even feasible for you to even get a van or get a box or get whatever you're going to get. Make sure you do your homework first. You have to do research first. And once you got enough research, you got enough stuff done, then you can move on to getting the MC and DOT and all that stuff. Do not, you're doing it backwards. Do not do that. Please do not do that. Please do not do that. Because what if you get the MC, DOT and all this stuff and uh, LLC, you paid this money to get all this stuff and then there's no work in your area. So you need to know if it's working in the area first. Don't do it backwards. Do the research, then go from there. She also asked, do you need commercial insurance right away when starting out using your own car? Absolutely not. Just go in there. You're going to send them that little, uh, that little certificate thing, that little piece of certificate from your insurance company. Put that in the apps, and you're going to go out there and get busy. You ain't got to worry about nothing. They ain't going to ask you to get no other extra insurance. Um, I signed up with all of the apps that I signed up with with regular insurance. I did not change anything. I just sent them that little card in when they asked for the insurance, and I got busy like that. Question number nine comes from at third element and they say what is the video setup you have for your van because it's fire The video what do you mean by video setup? Okay, Perfect. we got the kit. We got this wah right there right there So let me show you let me show you a little we on one GoPro right now, right? That's the one she recorded me on then we got this this go right here Wham ski That's right there. That's for the uh, driving footage right there I'm gonna take you guys to the back of the van right quick. So we are in the back of the van to get these bands as you guys can see We've got a little a little thing right a clip right here this clip is so 
You can see the angle from this way when they putting the pallet in there. Pause. And then we have another one right here. So we put one GoPro right here, and then we put the other one right here. We also did have a mount right here, but it keeps on falling off because it's getting too cold. We put a mount right here. So when I'm loading everything from this way, from the side of the van like this, whoop, you can see it from that angle right there. So that's the setup for the van. And that's what it is, baby. Oh yeah, and one more thing. I do have the harness. This is my chest harness. You just put this around your joint like this. I'm gonna y'all ain't never really see my setup, my kit. Let me show y'all right quick. Put this joint right here. I got this from uh, Target. They have them at Target, they have them at Amazon. You clip it right here, whoop, whoop. And you put the camera right here. This one, these uh, clips broke. So you just slide the joint on here like that, whoop. Put that joint right there. That's how I get busy, just like that. But shout out to you for asking that question and shout out to everyone that has asked a question. Make sure you guys smash that like button. This video needs to get to 1,000 likes. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you also smash the subscribe button. Next question. Question number 10 comes from at Jumpstart and they say, do people get weird about the camera and do you get a writing release to post them on YouTube? That's a, a camera and then the camera questions. Two camera questions right in a row. Um, some people do get weird about the camera. Like, especially when I first started, they was extra. They was extra tweaking about the camera then. It ain't been as bad as of lately, but you do, you are going to run into some people that do not like the camera or they act weird around the camera. Um, I do, I kind of understand where some people are coming from, but I also would like them to ask me in a proper manner because it's, it kind of, it kind of comes off rule sometimes. Why you, when they just, that's weird. Or they just do extra stuff and like, why are you doing all that? All you had to say was, are you recording? Like, no, I don't want to be on YouTube. That's it. That's all you got to say. Or I don't want to be on camera. That's it. I will blank you out. I don't have any issues. I don't have any problems blanking anybody out. As long as you ask in a, in a respectful manner. That's all I ask. That's all I ask. Now, some people may say you're disrespectful for even having a camera, but how are you going to tell me what I can have on my person? I wear what I want to wear. You be recorded all the time. You just don't pay attention to it. So that's the way I, what I think about that. Um, as far as me having them sign anything, absolutely not. I do not have anyone sign anything. Um, but if they do tell me they do not want to be on the camera, I'll automatically make sure I take them off. Even if I feel like some people, like, if I feel like that they act like a little, you know, shaky around the camera, they, they kind of like avoiding it, I would just let them know. Like, I'll, I won't put you on if you don't want me to. Some people say it's okay, and then some people are like, okay, they don't want to be on there. So I always, I always respect people's wishes if they want to be on the camera or not on the camera. And if I'm coming to someone's house to drop off something, I always make sure I cover their face up. Like cover their face up, mask them out so nobody knows who it is. So they won't know where you, anybody lives at. Also, I do want to say this. A lot of people say something about these cameras, but a lot, majority of the times you are on public property. You are on public property. Walmart, all that stand club, all that is public property. That is not private property. So make sure you guys keep that in mind. I know that some people get, I don't want to be on the camera. I, 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 I definitely don't mind not putting nobody on the camera but you also you need to know the laws know your rights on whether you can record or whether you cannot record especially if you're in this van especially if you're in your car they can't tell you what to record in your own car they can't tell you that so just keep that in mind while you're out there on the grind question number 11 comes from at brett and he says um what is your length and height of your sprinter van and what are your goals for 2024 the length and height of the Sprinter van. I'm going to tell you honestly, I really don't know all that. I know it's a 170 wheelbase. I know that it's like, oh, 14 feet. 14 feet back there. We can fit 14 feet uh, in the back. And the height is like 72. Oh, the height of the whole van. It's like 9 feet. So it's a 170 wheelbase. A 170 wheelbase. And the height is like 9 feet. And my goals for 2024 is, first off, we got to get to this 100,000 subscribers. We got to get that. I need that plaque next year, baby. I want to be holding that joint like Kobe. You know, RB Cole, I want to hold that joint like Kobe and Jordan when they hold the, uh, when they hold them trophies. I need that plaque. That's one thing. Um, I also need to invest a lot more. So my goal is to invest as much as possible because I believe that things are going to go up and I'm going to make way more money because I'm trying to hit to my maximum achievement goal by 40. When I get 40 years old, I'm talking about, I'm talking about full multi-millionaire, full bland properties everything so i need to invest more um also i do need to find other ways to do things with the cargo van with, with the sprinter van i would rather do my own thing than go under a carrier company or get a dot mc or you know do the gig apps and all that stuff i really 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 deep down inside pause 
want to create my own business. I do not want to have to worry about nobody else but me. That's it. That's all. So I kind of been trying to figure out what exactly what I want to do. I want to have my own little niche. I do not want to, um, I mean, moving stuff and doing side jobs and all that stuff is cool. Doing some gig apps here and there is cool. But I really want to build my own stuff. That's my, my, my one of my biggest goals of 2024 is build our own stuff and then maybe possibly add some more vans or, you know, box trucks or whatever. But do it all for ourselves and not have to deal with anybody else but the consumer. So that's my plans for 2024 and and that's about it i mean i'm of course i want to make some more money of course i want to do that i'm trying to make major buku dollars i'm trying to go out there uh, and pop my collar but we're going to see what happens honestly when people say um like what do you see yourself in this minimum this many amount of years i really don't know i just go with the flow and then whatever god takes me and whatever he puts on my uh in, in my site that's just what i go for that's just how i do things i'm already trying to get this green nothing in between Question number 12 comes from at Susan Jenkins, and she says, what percent of your earnings are you putting towards taxes on your business? You want to be honest with you, Susan? That's a great, that's an excellent question. Personally, we really don't spend much money. I told you guys that most of the money goes to investments. So as far as saving money, it's always money just in the account. So whenever the taxes, whatever we got to pay for taxes, we're just going to pay it out of that. We really don't move the money around like that. Most of the majority of the money is being invested, 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 invested. We do keep a, a decent amount in both accounts. Like we got the regular account with like uh, the gig apps and everything. And then we have the account with the carrier company. So we keep everything separated. But uh, we make sure that we keep a decent amount in each account. And whenever the taxes come, that's what we got to do. We got to pay what we got to pay. But again, as I told you guys in the previous um, the previous question, that for the most part, you really don't have to really pay taxes like that if you've driven enough miles. But we do make sure we pay some because you want to make sure that your business is profitable because that's going to allow the bank to give you more money later on. If you lose the money every time they give you some money, then they might not want to loan you any more money. So you guys, if you plan on doing this business or any other business, make sure that your business is profitable because if it's not, they're not going to want to loan you any more money. So I just want to throw that little gem in there. I appreciate the question though. Okay, question number 13 comes from at Taryn Eric and he says, sorry for asking, thinking about moving to North Chicago, is it cheap to live there? Huge shout out to my guy Taryn. He is the subscriber that has been around since the very, very beginning. Also, I want to say huge shout out to any other subscribers that's been around since the beginning and also the new subscriber that just subscribed to the channel. Make sure you all hit that like button. Now, my guy Terry want to move to North Chicago. That's where I'm from. I'm from North Chicago. Back in the day, it was way cheaper than it is now. But it's a, it's a little bit higher, but it's not that crazy. For a one bedroom, you probably, it depends. Hold on, wait, wait. Let me, let me say this. It depends on which what area in North Chicago you're going to move to. It's not that big, but they have um, areas that are like the big, nice houses in the back, built off in the cut, that you're going to pay more money for those. It depends on if you want to buy a house or if you want to do rent. If you want to buy a house, the housing market is a little bit higher than it used to be now because they're kind of gentrifying it a little bit. They're kind of fixing that joint up a little bit. They even got a Starbucks around here, I mean, down there. So they out there getting busy. But as far as rent go, you probably can get you a one bedroom from like 700. You probably can get you a two bedroom from like, depending on the area too, depending on the area. But like 850 to 1,000. You get you a three bedroom from 1,100 to 1,300. It depends on the area though. But it's not that bad. It's pretty much standard. It's, it's similar to everywhere around here, except for when you go to the really nice areas. You know when you go to Lake Forest and all, you're going to pay that bad. You're going to pay, hey, you're going to pay that, you're going to pay that fettuccine, that guacamole if you go out there. But huge shout out to my guy, Taryn, for the question. Question number 14 comes from at Rapid99, and he says, how much do you make a month off YouTube? That is a good question. Everybody always want to know how much dough we are trying to get. Now, honestly, doing YouTube is very similar to doing gig apps and doing uh, getting a carrier and all that stuff, being an independent contractor. It fluctuates drastically up and down, up and down, and up and down, and up and down. And just keep on doing that, doing that, doing that. So one money may be a thousand, another month it may be five thousand, but it's never really a consistent number. So anybody who out there doing YouTube or want to do YouTube. If you if you're doing YouTube, you already know the number is never consistent. You might have one video that just blow up, or you might not have one that's I'm getting a thousand uh, views. 
and that's why the reason why I tell you guys to smash that like button because it's going to push us out to more people. So smash the like button, and if you're not subscribed, go ahead and smash that subscribe button because we, the goal is a hundred thousand subscribers in 2024. We put up uh, to school. I want to buy my birthday, February 17th, 2024. Can we get 100,000 subscribers? That's what I want for my birthday. Y'all want to know what I want for my birthday? That's what I want. 100,000 subscribers by February 17th, 2024. Okay, and last but not least, question number 15 comes from at Motown YB, and he says, what was the last straw that broke the camel's back to make you seek entrepreneurship, and what kind of work were you doing in that 9 to 5? That's a long, long story. That right there is a long story. Now, I'm going to break it down to you guys. I actually thought about doing uh, a band talk about my work history and all that stuff and what I'm doing work and why I quit my job and all that stuff. But I'm just going to go ahead and tell you this is pretty much what happened. So I was working at my old job. So first, let me let me rewind a little bit. I'm going to rewind a little bit. Let me give you all a little backstory. So, boom, I went to Job Corps. After I got out of Job Corps, I started working at a place called Second Wind Exercise Equipment. At that place, I was, we was in a box truck and we used to deliver exercise equipment. We did the whole Wisconsin and some Illinois. So the driving and stuff, we used to go here, go there, but three hours away, four hours away. So huge shout out to my guy, Paulie C. Paulie C was one of my, my first partner and then my guy, I hope he's watching this, my guy, Remigis Stuchinski, my guy Remigis, my guy Remy. We used to go out there and get busy. We had a ball. I had a ball working at that old job. It was cool and all, but I end up wanting to do bigger and better things. So I went to another job which is the last job i work now i go there in 2014 no was it i think it was 2014 go there in 2014 now mind you let me move on a little bit more i've been the entrepreneur spirit has always been it's always been a thing for me a whole time a majority of my life i've been selling different stuff doing this selling my old clothes selling this switching up i've been doing i've been doing that stuff for my whole entire life so it's nothing new to me so boom, I'm working at my old job. I'm cool. I shout out to uh, he probably never seen this video, but his name is Tim. He was my supervisor at my old job. I used to sand first because I I went to, when I went to Job Corps. I went there for welding, so I'm a welder by trade, and I also went there for auto body and uh, paint. So I know how to paint cars and sand them, and you know do all that stuff. So I used to sand cement trucks, like cement trucks with the booms and all that. They go real real high up in the sky when they do all that stuff. Shooting like they shoot the um. The concrete, when they put the concrete up there, I used to do that stuff. So I used to sand that, get it all right, and then, you know, sand it down, prep it and everything, mask it off, and then they used to take it in the paint booth, they used to paint it. So I did that first. Then I'm like, you know what, I need to give me some more money. So now I went to another department and made more money where I was actually putting together the machine. So it's, it's called a, a boom. So I was putting, the, putting that together, doing all that. That was sweet. I was, you know, living living it up, in there chilling, doing my thing, uh, getting them busy with that, putting that stuff together. And then I'm like, I want to make some more money. So now I'm going to go to the welding department. They weld pipes. I was welding pipes. Pause. Oh, that was crazy. Now, everything was fine. I went back there. I was back there. I'm doing my thing. I'm welding my pipes. I ain't having no problems. I got my toolbox. I got my whole little setup. You know, I'm on the phone I'm talking about business partner. We talking about, yeah, after I get off work, we got to go over here. We got to go knock on doors. We got to do the real estate stuff. We're doing that, I'm on the phone. You know, I'm bumping my music. I'm, I'm listening to my books. I told y'all every single day. I'm listening to my books. Rich Dad, Poor Dad, Think and Grow Rich every single day. It was six hours. Every day I listen, I'm listening to them books. Doing that, boom, boom, boom. So next thing you know, eventually what happened is, we got new management. Now, when we got this new management, it got real. It got super real. Honestly, I was chilling back there. I didn't have no issues. I was getting my, I was, I was educating myself, listening to those books. I was chilling. I was still doing my work. Now, one thing I do, I've always done is I've never been lazy. I'm always gonna do my job. So I, I have my set amount of pipes that I'm gonna weld, pause, and that's what I'm gonna do every day. I'm gonna make sure that that's at least done. At least 40 pipes is gonna be welded that day. So boom, we get the new management. And boy, 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 it went downhill from there. It was critical. So the new management come. Now my supervisor is not no longer my supervisor. He's now under the supervisor. He's like the lead, but he's not the lead of me. He's like the lead of another department. So another supervisor came in. This dude was out of control. He was doing way too much. 
I always seem to be getting singled out all the time, and they always saying something to me. They don't say to nobody else. They want me to move over here, go over here, go over there. Ain't nobody else moving. And I had an issue with this to the point where it got this bad now. I had to tell HR. I talked to HR. HR, the one thing I'm going to tell you guys about this, with these jobs, I'm going to tell you this. This is very important. Listen to what I'm saying. These jobs do not care about you. I'm going to tell you right now. They do not give a care about you or nothing. They're always going to do what's best for the company. So always do what's best for you. And how do I know that? I learned this the hard way. I went to HR. The lady was there. We used to, I was cool with her before this. Me and her talking, you know, she was cool. You know, she had some real estate. We used to talk about, you know, everything was cool. Then I went in there. So I was talking to her like, yeah, I feel like I'm being singled out. The dude always saying something to me. He, he don't say nothing to nobody else. Everybody else can do what they want to do. They all, everybody's always an issue with me. Now, this had gotten so bad that I had actually reached out to my real estate attorney. He, my real estate attorney, let him know, like, I don't know, man, it's, it's, it's getting critical. Boo, boo, boo. So then he said, okay, I'm going to give you this number. I called this lady. I had a paralegal. It gets bad. I'm documenting my business partner. Like, I call her and tell her, document this. She's the one that came up with this idea. You got to document everything. We document everything. The time, what they said, everything, everything that went on. So we can try to get this lawsuit. But, boom. That's how I found out that the you know HR they told me they're gonna do an investigation and all this and all this. And then let me tell you guys this: don't ever believe that people are going to rob for you like they think they're gonna rob for you because they really ain't. Some of them may, but some of them not. So they had to do an investigation. The investigation consisted of her, the, the lady in the HR coming to our department, asking different people, do they feel like I've been singled out? Do this happen? Do the do the supervisors always say something to me and not saying to nobody else? And he used the N-word too. Ever what? say that? He was trying to he was trying to be cool, but he did use it. Now, I ain't lying about this. So the HR lady came over there, asked him all the questions about that. I don't know what they said. From what she said that they said, they said that they don't know. They don't know if they don't know. Some people may say that you kind of maybe singled out, but they don't really know because ain't nobody really gonna rob you because their job is on the line. You know, if if it get real, they job on the line. They ain't taking no hit for you. So just know that when you go to these people and they ain't willing to risk it all. They ain't risking it for the biscuit, just so you guys know. So in the midst of all this investigation that's going on, all that stuff, he's still acting a fool. He's still doing too much. Me and him, low key, we low key getting into it pretty much every single day. We pretty much getting every single day. I ain't had no problems before him. Everything was cool. It gets to the point where at this point, man, the jig is just up. I ain't got time to keep dealing with this. I'm not dealing with it no more. So what I'm going to do is this. I put in my vacation days. I put all my vacation days in. I think it was close to the 4th of July or something like that. Close to the 4th of July. And honestly, I already had it in my head that I'm not going back. Now, what I do want to say is this. When you are, if you are working a job right now, you plan on doing this. I ain't gonna lie, my stomach was hurting so bad, boy. Like, it was multiple days I was gonna quit. Multiple times, multiple. It probably like three or four times. I'm talking about, man, my stomach hurt. <laughs> my stomach hurt so bad. I'm talking about my stomach hurting because I knew, and that's what made me know that when my stomach started hurting like that, that I'm doing the right thing. And I haven't looked back ever since. We went through the invest. They went through the investigation. The paralegal reached out to the to them to try to you know settle get a settlement. They wasn't going. The paralegal pretty much told me at this point there's nothing else she can do. I can't hire another lawyer, another attorney to pursue this. But she that's as much as she can do because they they weren't settling it. So I'm like you know what I ain't got time. It's gonna take three five years. I ain't got time to keep on to go to court and all this stuff. So I end up just saying forget it. I did try to get unemployment. They denied that too. So it was just real. It was all the real all the way around the board. And that is the video. It's a short that I have where I said that that was my last day working. That was my last day working. June 20, yes, what it was. June 28th or 26th, one of them two. So today is June 28th, 2019, right? And thus far, this will be the biggest day of my life. Um, today is my last full day of working for somebody. Um, on Monday, I'm coming, uh, get them they, they belongings and everything and, and it's over. Uh, this has been one of my biggest dreams since I was younger to not work for somebody by the time I turn 30. Um, I'm actually 29. Um, I was gonna wait till next year to do this, but pretty much my hand was forced and I'm gonna explain that to you guys later on in the rest of this video, cause this will be going on YouTube. So um, yeah, it's official, man. And I understand you can do this too. I'm not nobody special. Um, I just saved my money and invested it. And um, now I'm gonna retire. That's what happened. I ain't never going back again. I ain't never going back to a job again. I, well, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to keep on grinding so I can keep on shining. But I appreciate that was a great last question. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, if you are not subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, do not forget 
This video needs to get to 1,000 likes. Hit that like button before you go and lock in tomorrow. Well, lock in Monday because y'all know we going back to school again. We already getting dividends. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's DDK and I'm on my way.